and happy Friday. This is Key with All Things Key. Thank you so much for tuning in. It is the end of the week. We finally made it. Well, for some people we say finally made it, but anyway, thank you for tuning in today. I'm feeling, well, first of all, let's talk about the fact that I'm actually getting this done early, okay? Bravo to me, right? So anyways, it's Friday. I'm excited. Still working, but nonetheless, things are getting done. So the few things that I've been working on today was getting together with my team, trying to do some team building, literally and figuratively, right? So we're team building, having meetings, but also trying to bring more people along. I think in another video, I probably mentioned how, you know, I'm trying to get out of that habit of doing things alone because I'm, I'm not good at everything. I'm okay at a lot of things, but some things are meant for other people to do, right? And to grow, you really do need help in business. So for all of you guys that are new in business, you are aspiring to be an entrepreneur take that which I'm sure I probably will not be the first person to say it and I'm definitely not gonna be the last but the key is to outsource as much as you can so that you can focus on getting your business out there um, because it's really hard when you are like an octopus. You're all over the place. You're trying to do this. You're trying to do this. You're trying to do that. So today I wanted to talk about how we are outsourcing. So I know you can't really see because I got some people's personal stuff on it. Well, you know, it's not really personal. It is personal. So you see here, I have things that I'm looking for. So trying to grow. When you're in certain, when a, when you have a business that's like, you can touch nationwide, you really need more help than you think because what you don't want to do, like me as the owner, founder, I can deal with the burnout. It's my business, but I would not want my team to feel the burnout. So to ensure that my team doesn't feel the burnout, got to get us some more teammates so we're working on that so some things I don't really require like maybe if I could take some task off of my team that I already have take some task off their hands and do some outsourcing I've done outsourcing actually with each business I have um, I've done outsourcing in which I'm sure many people have. Sorry. My mouth is about to be wet because I'm going to eat a piece of candy. It's probably not good for camera. But this is not formal, right? I'm not paying you guys to come to class. I'm just dropping a little bit of what I've been doing, right? It's a hot chew. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so I've done some outsourcing with a lot of things like getting some assistance with uh, social media, scheduling, um, getting people to organize my files or transfer certain things from Word to Excel or something like that. Little tedious jobs. I've definitely utilized outsourcing. And my main outsourcing tool is I know y'all already know who it is but I'm going to tell you Fiverr. 
Now, Fiverr is not like this new thing that's just coming around. Fiverr's been around for a while. Um, there's good and bad, just like with anything, right? So in my opinion, and I'm so sorry, y'all. Judge me in the comments. I swear I won't get mad that I ate that candy and I'm talking. My mouth was so juicy. I'm sorry. But I just had to. But anyway, so I've used Fiverr to do those things, right? So I want to talk about the good and the bad with Fiverr. Because here I am getting ready to run through a whole cycle of uh, upgrading and doing more with my business so I can grow my business. So I will need to probably outsource some more. I like Fiverr because there's like this broad group of people that can do pretty much anything. You can find it there. Uh, the price ranges are from entry level to expert, 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 right? Uh, there's people from everywhere, all walks of life, things. Um, so you have a choice, which is good and bad. For someone like me, it could be either or because honestly, when I'm given too many options, it's sometimes not good. But nonetheless, it works out. Fiverr also, for me, I had a moment where I didn't kind of want to use it because you get the product, you pay for the product before it's finished. Meaning, I hire you for a job that you tell me you can do, and you not, it doesn't always match. Uh, the reviews are good. I'm a review reader. And a lot of times these people have really good reviews. But see, I don't know those people that are making the reviews. Their level of work. Or their their standard of work. Not level. Their standard of work could be different from myself. They could be more lenient than myself. Maybe I may be more lenient than them. I You never know. And so... You don't always have, and if it's something that you need, like, quick, sometimes you don't have that time to just thoroughly go through things with a fine-tooth comb. You just hope your gut is correct, right? So, I will say with fiber, it is a hit or miss. A con there for me also will be... Not only paying for it before the actual project is done, but if you just so happen to sometimes get the individuals that are not American to help you, yes, their prices are enticing. And also, I mean, if I could be real, some of their work is good. Their work ethic is a lot different for some. And... But they're so aggressive with telling you how you should rate them because they're so they're so focused on getting um, they're so focused on getting perfect reviews, perfect that sometimes they could come to you if you say something one little negative thing, and if I rate you honestly, because I'm I'm gonna be honest because I would want someone to be honest to me, so. I'm honest, sometimes it may be like a 4.4, 4.5, or something like that, and then they're coming in your box like, why didn't I get a 5? I deserve a 5, and I'm like, mm, just off of that alone, you can't get a 5 for me, because what do you mean you deserve a 5? That's crazy. So, at the end of the day, it's hit or miss, you got good and you got bad, you got some that beef up their resume, like they're telling you that they didn't know how to do something and they're self-starter because some things, I need you to be able to log in and do what you need to do with little to no direction. And they'll tell you that and then you find yourself doing work. Example. 
I needed someone to assist me with some social media posts. I gave photos and things of that nature. And I said, I would like posts for this day, this day, this day, whatever, whatever, until about two weeks. Because I didn't have time. And so they're like, oh yeah, you know, I've worked with this type of business before, blah, 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 you know, you know. And I'm like, okay, wonderful, great, that's good. That, that makes me happy. And so after that, I started getting messages like, hey, what do you want me to say? What would you like me to say? But they have nothing for me to tweak off of. Like, I have a whole website. I have a whole, you know, I've listed, like, I've given a whole list of things that may be pertinent and important about my business, things that I offer, stuff like that. So I gave that information, and if you've worked with this type of business before, I provide you with the content, meaning I provide you with photos. So in my mind, if it's me and you give me a picture, and you tell me these are the pictures I'm going to use I run a TV hanging business right so I look at the picture I look at how the picture how the, the TV's hanging and I look at all these things I looked at the mount and all this I can look and visualize and say something catchy about that right and if I've worked with this type of business before or even if I haven't you study right and you look and you say what are some good hashtags to use with this so you go and you you know you tweak it and you do whatever now if you want my approval okay I'm all about approval and maybe tweak but for me to sit back and tell you exactly I gave you the photos you want me to tell you exactly what to write you want me to then do if I take two more minutes what should I should I could just post it myself right so you I've had those issues and I know that was a long drawn out story but that's bottom line sometimes you find the ones that will tell you they know how to do something and they're familiar with something and they're really not so now you've paid someone to do the job that you just pretty much did or you'll get someone that say they can do yours but they have so much other stuff going on and the time frames that they give you like some people it'll be like if you get someone to do cold calling let's say that if you say oh can you do cold calling for me because that list says they have three days to do it or five days to do those calls if they don't want to start on your project that day, they don't have to. Now, it's important to you to get that done, to get it at least started. But to them, they have five days. And then if you ask, it sometimes depends on who it is. Sometimes it's not a good response. So, it could be, it could be a little annoying to say the least to know that just because it says five days you have if I'm trying to ask you when can you get started you say oh I can do it I'm thinking that you can do it and then when I ask a question the next day because I noticed that I haven't seen anything I haven't heard anything and you're like oh well we have five days to get this done so what are you going to do you're going to take day five to do all of the calls that's a downward. So I think it could work if you're looking for gigs, right? But then on the flip side, if you have a person that does well, you gain a rapport, guess what? Sometimes it can turn into something that works outside of fiber, which is always amazing. If you can get someone to enjoy working with you, you enjoy working with them. I actually had that experience where I had someone that I met on Fiverr. They were helping me with little odds and ends. We talked so much. We kept in touch so much. It was such a good interaction with us that 
we took our work um, relationship off of Fiverr and she became my employee. So it could work either way. I'm not promoting going on Fiverr stealing their people. I'm definitely not promoting that. But things like that can happen, right? So Fiverr is a good place to go when you need a little help with your business. That's where we are. But now, let's talk, and, and let me just put a disclaimer in here. Fiverr not paying me nothing to say nothing about nothing, okay? When I go on Fiverr, I pay my people. I pay that, whatever they take from them, I don't know. But I am not paid to promote Fiverr because I'm telling you plus and good and bad, right? So now, keep in mind when I say about Fiverr, in my opinion, Fiverr is amazing for gigs, things that you just need somebody to do, like, right then, right? But be very, very uh, mindful that sometimes you may waste a little money on some people because they won't do the things that you required them to do. Um, they say they can, and then when it's done, it's not up to your liking because they're not as skilled as they say they are. So sometimes that could be an issue. I will admit that I feel like I spend a lot on budget when it came to trying to find the right person to help, but trying not to overspend. And so sometimes it's what they say, you get what you pay for, right? You get what you pay for. And that's a hard lesson that we all have to learn where sometimes you could have just went ahead and paid all the money to begin with and get it done. But when you're a business owner and you're bootstrapping your business, you try to cut corners, of course, which you shouldn't. But I'm me and this is what I've been doing. So I'm here to share my mistakes and my wins my progression my journey all of that with you guys being as truthful as i can be so i will say this it works sometimes sometimes it doesn't but also before you even think that i'm trying to say paying more means it's better that's not always true either i spent good money with people that did not deliver the way that they were supposed to it was a hype around this this person and you go to you go to it because you feel like okay well you know people like them but you have to remember people buy into people so you may have liked that person so much that you didn't see the flaw or maybe that was just your standard and my standard was different my requirement was different so um yes sometimes when you pay a less amount trying to be frugal <laughs> trying to be frugal sometimes you end up spending more because you have to purchase and repurchase and purchase and repurchase the service so that's the downside now let's go to the next one which is Upwork is also freelancer land. Let me not go there. It is freelancer land. However, Upwork more so wants to encourage um, hiring on for long-term projects. So now this is where we get into where they appear to be a real employee you are paying them hourly right now there is an option where you could do a fixed rate like Fiverr but I feel like for certain tasks you would want it to be hourly because when they clock into Upwork you can see like they don't they can't put you can set your you can set your You can set your uh, contract where you don't allow your employee to fill in their own time 
so while they're clocked in and up work it's clocking their time I like up work because I like the idea of paying people for their work if you are at work for six hours doing a project I feel that you should be paid there just as Fiverr there is a broad amount of freelancers that does many things you have social media individuals you have business uh, marketing people you have uh, video editors photo editors you have people that write uh, transcripts for you you have people that transcribe information for you you have people that transfer data your virtual assistants all of the things that you think that you would need in business you have the recruiters, schedulers, sales and marketing. All of those people are on Upwork. And let me put a disclaimer right here as well. Upwork is not paying me anything to get on here and say nothing. This is just one of the things that I have been utilizing to get things done. I mean, nothing more, nothing less. Get things done and that's that on that, right? So, I like the things that are incorporated in Upwork. Upwork has the ability for you to create Zoom meetings. You can do phone calls right from the app. So, which is good because a lot of things are recorded. And that's not to take away from Fiverr. Fiverr has where, you know, of course, if you're emailing, that's why they try to encourage you not to do a lot of offline communicating because the, the communicating online is pretty much your insurance. If you ever need a, compl a complaint, have a complaint or anything like that, you can go back to your files and you can see it. Upwork, we have all those embedded items such as Zoom, Skype, things of like that nature that you can communicate with the individual that's a part of your team. You can bring your team on to Upwork as well. When I say that, for instance, if I'm looking for someone to do recruiting, I can go on there and a lot of times there is a company that is registered in Upwork as a company and they are outsourcing their people. So you could choose to say, oh, I would love to work with that company, okay. Can I have three of your people? And boom, you have three recruiters, right? I don't know what just happened, but my eyes started watering. It's making me cry. <laughs> nah, but um, so Upwork has been good. I have used Upwork before. It's thirsty. It's my apple juice. Y'all remember these apple juices from Martin? <laughs> Martinelli's is the best apple juice if you didn't know. And they not paying me either, so it don't matter what. I'm about to be over here like the reality shows and put some tape over my stuff. I ain't promoting none of them folks. Nah, but, uh, so, I will not sit here and stand for Upwork without telling the other portion. This portion was kind of my fault a little bit. So I had an individual that I needed to help with. I'm, I'm worded correctly. Sharing documents from one program to another. It was tedious work. I didn't want to do it, but it was such a big file that I had that I really wanted some help. So I outsourced to Upwork, and what I neglected to do, as stated earlier, about how you have the option to allow your people to put their time in. So I had someone else smart enough to know that they could go in and put their time, and I'm wondering, 
Now, it's been plenty of times that I was trying to call this person. I was trying to text this person. I was trying to contact this person throughout the week. And I got no answer. But if I'm looking at this here, it says they work 40 hours. When was that and where was I? Right? So I'm paying this person for 40 hours, but they're not clearly not putting in the work because if you're doing 40 hours with that and you're actually doing it, it wouldn't have took you as long as it took. It took two weeks for this person to complete this task. 40 hours is long enough to do something of that sort. It wasn't like I was, I'm running this huge hospital with a thousand employees. That's not what the case was. So they got over. I didn't like it, but they did. But with remote workers, period, honestly, when they're not held to your company's guidelines as a true employee, like under you, it could be challenging. And that's whether they come from Fiverr or Upwork or any other third party source. Because at the end of the day, sometimes you get some people, remote workers, they tend to feel like they're their own boss and which they're contracted, so they are. But if you wanna get paid, you kinda not, right? So, you end up dealing with a lot of attitude, a lot of last minute stuff, a lot of mishandling of communication. Like, you'll send me an email to tell me you're not gonna be able to work. What if I didn't check my email at six o'clock in the morning and I don't check my email? Because I will say, sometimes Yes, I have it where emails come to my phone. But sometimes I don't check my email until probably like later because if I sometimes if I wake up, sometimes it's time to get right to it. Like I got phone calls coming in. I might have just got up in time to get myself washed up, cleaned up, looking like something. And then I got to hit a Zoom meeting or I got to go to a appointment or something like that. So sometimes I don't see it. And in my mind, I'm assuming that my person is at work. And then I finally check my email at like uh, 1035, 1040 or something. I'm just throwing a number out. And it says, hey, just want to let you know I'm not going to be able to work today. So three hours are gone. And I'm thinking work is getting done and nothing's getting done. You see what I'm saying? So it's hit or miss anything with remote workers. We all see it now. Everything right now is due to the COVID, due to the COVID, due to the COVID, due to the I'm so sick of everybody with this due to the COVID. You can't answer no phones. People been dying to work from home and they work from home and still won't work from home. Don't let that go over your head. Okay? You're dying to go work from home. You finally get a chance. God just said, wham, work from home. And you still can't work from home. Or the ones that, it's somebody out here that want the job. Give it to them. Why are you stressed the people you already got out? Nobody should be waiting two hours on the phone line for no phone call. We can't do this. We can't do that. We can't get our stuff on time. It's just too much and I'm over it. Okay? But anyways, so, I'm not going to talk to you guys in depth. I really just wanted to come in and talk about the usage of fiber and Upwork as I'm expanding my team. I am utilizing this for outsourcing and also looking for a few new team members so it's still challenging you still have to do the whole interview process I mean you're sending out a, a gang of emails daily reading the response 
looking at the reviews, it's still a lot of work, but it's nice to have so many people on there that you could choose from. And these people are from everywhere, all walks of life. I mean, you can't beat it. It's just all right there. Um, especially when you are not that business that's just like up and booming, 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 right? So you can't really, you don't want to bring someone when you're not able to offer them all the things that you want to give. Like me, if I bring you on my team, I'm going to offer you health care, 401k, things like that. And until I'm at that point where I feel like I can safely do that and not feel like, oh my God, what if, what if, what if. So this is what works for me. And if you are a new business as well and you are trying to expand your business, this can work for you as well. Uh, also, even if you are just considering getting started or if you're just doing a business that does not include employees and you just need a good little task, a gig, as they like to call it, a gig, you need a gig done, you could go here and you could find them. Each person on there is a small business. Most people, if they work for a, co a company, they usually put that in their um, bio. But for those of us that are uh, trying to be conscious about supporting small businesses, you know, each person that posts a gig, I mean, it's their little business, their side hustle, whatever you want to call it, support them. You got some people, this is their profession, but this is how they make extra money. I can't be mad at that. You just got to let it be known. Be very clear. Be very direct with what you request. I suggest that if you use this, have all your stuff written down and be very precise as to what you're looking for, what you want, what you need. Put that in there. Make sure it is in documentation and get them to tell you that that's what they can do. So if there's ever an issue, if you need to reach back out to the company, they can look through your messages and you'll have a leg to stand on. You always wanna make sure you're standing on that. I made that mistake a few times where I was very um, broad with what I was requesting, not being very direct about it because I still was a little timid on that end trying to you know, do the whole uh, freelancer situation so yeah it's not a bad idea to use either um, remember this one is great for if you're looking for hourly workers Upwork is great for hourly workers and you can also do gigs there is a portion where you can pick a fixed rate and you can negotiate with your people they're asking for what they're asking for you if you want to you want to negotiate I usually don't because a lot of them their prices are reasonable so I give people what they what they ask for unless some people just really real unrealistic which I ran into those especially for what I'm asking for so yeah keep all that in mind and I wish nothing but the best for you all I will be sharing more videos like this I hope you enjoyed this one um, please like comment share subscribe hit the notification bell and uh have an amazing weekend stay safe stay healthy i don't know what the weather's like where you are but stay cool or warm <laughs> either one today is a rainy day for us here it's a little gloomy so you know we staying warm and dry so um anyways to see you guys on the next video. Later!